So and, for people who didn't see it, yeah. after the bell in the main event, the, uh, the, the guy who won by knockout kept hammering as the ref was pulling him off and ultimately was disqualified. And there's been a whole bunch of people that have uh, expressed their, their feelings about it. Uh, John Goulet, UFC veteran mm-hmm. Jonathan Goulet, you, uh, TKO, former TKO champion, he said he fought Thomas Schulte at the Bell Center mm-hmm. in front of close to 10,000 people. He said, you can't hear anything. And all you're concerned about is the person that just spent, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, the person that just spent 8, 10, yeah. 12 weeks training to yeah. kill yeah. you. Mm-hmm. So when you drop them, he said all he, could, all he could think of is, I hope this guy doesn't wake up. Yeah. As you're punching yeah. him, you're not really concerned yeah. about the referee. Yeah. And, and uh, to your point before that we've talked about it, but you're still supposed to be in control. You're supposed to be in control. And when Dan Henderson didn't approve of that moment, it's because he saw it, and he saw it as intentional, because he's able to control himself, How, which means, if that is true, if Dan Henderson is always in control, then when he jumped through the air and punched Michael Extra Bisping shot. in the face, that was intentional, which it may well have been. Dan, but... Dan chose in that moment to break the rules for whatever reason. It's an interesting, it's an interesting topic, you know, uh, the the rules and the agreement that we make to play by them when we fight another guy. I mean, it's combat. You can't kick him when he's down, but he can kick you when he's down. Weird. You know what I mean? I can stand over you and punch you as hard as I want in the face, I, but you're not allowed to kick me if my knee is touching. Weird to me. You know what I mean? But that's the structure, and, and, and truthfully, as illogical as all that stuff is, when you sign that thing, so they, they give you a bout agreement, and it's, it's all outlined, mm-hmm. and okay? And so in Winnipeg, my second and third fights were in Winnipeg. I lost my second, and then I won my third. It was my first win, and it was very exciting. And they tell you, this... It, there was this is not what at that time was not allowed the, the forearm el- el- the elbow yeah, it was not you allowed. had to hit, hit with, with the, the forearm, forearm. Yeah. but most refs would be like you know this is dumb, yeah, yeah does that make any sense this is still not allowed but this is yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. i mean but that's all been outlined it's all in your contract now i'm training for 8 weeks with that in mind as a professional then when I get there the day before, before we even weigh in often, uh, because they know they have you there and you're not going anywhere, yeah. they'll tell you the rules again. Mm-hmm. But you're very depleted at that point. You just <laughs> don't want to hear a fucking thing they have to say. Uh, it sucks. The rule meeting lasts, it, it's probably four to six minutes. It feels like yeah. a lifetime. You haven't drank water since the night I like before. any questions. Yeah. Nobody asks. Never. No one, and if anyone has a question, <laughs> they're dead. They're dead. How dare you ask a question about nine to six, six to three to whatever, 12 to six elbows. I'll kill you. But you can't kill him because you can't. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, so weak. You're so weak. Uh, so that happens. And then um, in the back room, or that night, they may be uh, another rules meeting. And then you will have your referee come to you and explain it to you. And your job is to work within those things. Now, the argument, oh, I lost control, I saw red, it was a very emotional, that in no way, oh, okay, then you didn't, oh, I, uh, I see, you were, you were gonna do your job, but you lost control. Go try to tell that to your boss here. Try, anyone try to tell that to their boss. Anyone, you know, try to tell that to the police. Well, you know, I, uh, this guy, he gave me wrong change, and next thing you knew, I lost control, and I stabbed him twice. But, but isn't this a— You know, it's like, oh, you lost control. Oh, I guess we're okay then. I understand, but isn't this a unique scenario? You're putting your body through a ridiculous amount of stress and trauma, and you're not thinking clearly. I'm sure there's times in there, like we've talked to fighters at the highest level who say, you know, we know what we're supposed to do, but we get in there, and even though we have yeah. 25 yeah. fights— the highest level, we still don't do things that we're supposed to do because of the nature of what they're doing. That's right. 